It's the Jaden Show, and here's your host, Jaden Cornelius. Welcome to the Jaden Show. Another Sunday has fallen upon us. These weeks seem to go so quickly, but great because I get very excited for the next show, and this show is going to be as exciting, if not more, than all the other shows combined, because I'm going to speak to an amazing guy from California, Mexican guy, but lives in California. He is just a phenomenal talent, unbelievable baritone. I've known him for probably about three or four years now. I've seen him sing in Quintana Roo, and just had to introduce him to you because the boy is bloody amazing. So let's go and watch a little piece of him in action, and then we're going to go and meet this week's very special guest, Senor Jose Luis Maldonado Jr. This week's special guest. See you in a minute. Oh! 
dominante, con le fortissime sono come il fuoco minaccio di qualcosa della città, della città, della città, della città, della città. Bravo Figaro, bravo, bravissimo, bravo Figaro, bravo, bravissimo, fortunatissimo, 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 per verità. Let's go and meet this week's very special guest. Jose Luis Maldonado Junior. Bienvenido a the Jaden Show. How are you doing, my friend? <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you? Did Did I say your name in, in a kind of proper way? Yeah, yeah. Jose Luis wow. Maldonado uh, uh, Junior? I've never heard Junior. It's usually Junior. Junior. But, or Junior. <laughs> well, Jose Luis Maldonado Junior, if I'm going to say <laughs> British. <laughs> Hi, now, it's I remember meeting you a couple of years ago. I know it was 2018. It's before COVID, right? It was before COVID. Wow, okay. Because yeah. you sung, you absolutely blew my socks off when I watched you singing in this tiny church in a tiny um, town in Quintana Roo, Mexico with Opera Maya. Oh, uh, that was a fun concert. Oh, my God, man. You were just... Oh. 2019 it was 2019 okay so just before right before yeah wow and incredible mate i have to be honest like soy tu fan like you really have the most amazing vocal and your energy and your presence on stage is just in like you're so captivating because you're so you're so serious and you're so well trained but you're also bloody funny and just really approachable you know you kind of you feel like everyone feels they're your best mate just by watching you perform so oh, you know it you. was super, super <laughs> cool. so obviously like you've been doing this for a little bit of time now right because that kind of voice and that kind of presence doesn't happen in three months of training right or no, definitely not three months of training <laughs> um I, I i started a little later than normal but not too late i started around 21 years old so it was okay. about 12 years ago 11, 12 years ago. Uh, but I grew up in music. I grew up playing saxophone since I was like eight years old. Wow, okay. Uh, and and what, an opera, I mean, like, that's not the kind of what I would assume a 21 year old guy would go home and listen to. You know, like, normally I'd be saying, you know, would you go and listen to Metallica? Yeah. Would you brought up with Metallica or Pink? Or, you know, like, how would, but, you know, why did you choose opera? For what reason? Well, opera chose me, to be yeah. honest. So it's very interesting. When I was in high school, uh, I was the band president. I mean, I did everything in high school except yeah, yeah. theater, except choir. But okay. everything else, I was in it. I was in band. I was in football. I was in the varsity football team. I was in all the clubs. I was. I was just everywhere. I was. I was so involved in school, and uh, and I was in student government. Okay. So because, since I was president of the band and I was in student government. They would ask me to sit in for the uh, auditions for when the students auditioned for the national anthem. So, so I would sit in every time we we're going to have a, an assembly at the school or an event. And um, it was my junior year. It was a winter assembly, <laughs> and the people that show up to audition either weren't prepared, they didn't know the words, or they were modulating in that second half, you know, on the rockets' red glare. Like, mm -hmm. And I remember, because, I mean, the teachers will pick somebody. You don't have to have the greatest voice. You just have to have passion and pre preparation. Okay. But there was no, there was <laughs> none of it that day. None of it at all. <laughs> so I remember th they were talking, and we were just like, well, what are we going to do? And uh, one of the teachers says, well, Joe, um, can, so I grew up, I grew up as Joe going, yeah. I, I, like, so Joe, can we get the band to play? And I was like, yeah, I'll get the band to play. No problem. But then the vice principal uh, of that division, she goes, I really wanted a singer. 
And she was like the mama of the school, you know. Everybody loved her. I loved her. She was like our mama at school. So I remember looking at her and I was like, I'll do it. And can you, can you sing? I go, I don't know, but I know the words and I'm not going to modulate. <laughs> and they said, oh, okay, well, stand up, sing. Let's hear it. I was like, right now? Yeah. So I stood up and all I could remember was when I was four years old, I used to have a VHS. Yeah. That I would watch almost every day <laughs> in my parents' bedroom. It, and it was, at that time, what I would call an old man singing patriotic songs. Okay. You know, like, and, uh, like, Yankee Doodle went to Tarot, say, just all these. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so I just kind of mimicked that, right? So I stood there, and I was like, oh, say, can you see? Or kind of try to make it, like, that sound. Yeah. Like, okay, great, you'll sing it. I was like, okay. I mean, later I find out what I was listening to was Robert Merrill Sings America. Wow, okay. <laughs> I'm old man singing patriotic songs, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I was like, whoa. So um, so I remember, and I, I was used to, I grew up really shy, but in high school is when I kind of became more outgoing. And, of course, I mean, I got involved in all these things and kind of found part of myself there or who, who I was becoming. But I've never sung in front of a whole bunch of people before, thousands of people. We had this reno newly renovated um, auditorium because before I even arrived to the school, it was a gym and it burned down. So it was beautiful. They re re wow. rebuilt it, have a new gym somewhere else, beautiful auditorium where the Rio Hondo Symphony performs regularly, or now they're called the Whittier Area Symphony. So I remember walking out and I look out and I'm like, holy smokes so many people i freaked out like my toes were already moving to walk <laughs> off. and before i could even move out to walk off all of a sudden like this faint sound because like Shh, everyone starts cheering going crazy and i'm just like i so can't run now a little rush of confidence <laughs> and i sang and there that was my i broke the stage fright in front of thousands of people wow and, and i sang the national anthem and I kept doing, I did a couple more times, especially my senior year. We did like a farewell assembly and I did a beautiful duet with, um, with a gospel singer. It was kind of cool. And, you know, and it ends at the home of the brave America and go straight to, oh, beautiful. It was a combo of America, the beautiful and the star spangled banner, wow, which beautiful. I think is how it should be sung all the time. And, um, hopefully I could do it at WrestleMania one day. That's <laughs> another story. That's the dream. Um, so, but, but, you know, that for me, that was just another experience, you know, that was cool. I did a lot of things. So it was just experiences for me. And, uh, when I graduated that year, we, we didn't buy our cap and gowns, right? We just, we rented them mm -hmm. and then they made sure that they got in return because at the end of the ceremony, they gave us blank envelopes in the ceremony. And then at the end of the ceremony, they give us our real diploma for, for the uh, cap and gown. So we're all lined up in the quad at the school. Um, and I am about to, I'm about to go next. And as I'm walking over the teacher next to that teacher says, Hey, switch with me. And I look and it was Miss Sampson who was, she, she, she was kind of a mean teacher back then. Yeah. Not to me, but I was like, uh Oh, what did I do? I was kind of a little worried. I was a little nervous. <laughs> and I was like, Hey, Miss Sampson. She goes, Hey Joe. She goes, you know, you have a nice voice. I go, thank you. You should take a voice class in college. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> She's like, I'm not saying you're bad, but I think with some training, you could be like the next Andrea Bocelli or Luciano Pavarotti. And I didn't even know who they were back then. Wow. But now it comes to show, I have the same birthday as Pavarotti. Wow. That's a song. Kind of cool. Yeah. And, and I go, oh, Miss Samson, I appreciate it. Be, I'm a saxophone player. I don't want to sing. You know, I, Maybe I sing some jazz, but... I, uh, I'm i going to take jazz class, jazz, saxophone, jazz in college. And she goes, I know, I know, I know. Just just promise me to take a voice class in college. And I was like, Miss Samson, I really didn't want to. I was like, I really don't want to. She goes, promise me, Joe. And, and like, she has my diploma and she's like, she like pulls it away. <laughs> wow. Okay. And I look and I look at her and I look and I go, okay, I'll do it. She goes, no, say it. Miss Sampson, I promise I'll take a voice class in college. Congratulations, you graduated high school. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, have you ever had, I mean, obviously now, you know, you're a phenomenal artist. Have you, has she ever 
witnessed who you've become. She, she yeah, yeah. She was oh, at my how last cool. concert here in California. She went to my first recital when I was in the junior college. How cool. I mean, she's, I, I'm, I'm always, you know, it's always a pleasure to have her. She just retired so she can come to more of my things, which is great. And actually, we're supposed to have Greek food before I leave to Aspen sometime next week. Um, no, she, she wow. was, that was, that was that first seed, that blessing right there. So I remember I went to, um, my first year I went to a polytechnic university cause I wanted to be a business major. And, uh, I went to Cal Poly Pomona. I was in the Latin jazz band and I was like, okay, you know, I'll probably take a voice class next semester or sometime next year, you know, cause I want to keep my promise. I did make the promise even if it was forced, but I left after the first year because of the economy that was 08, so 07, 08, the big wow. crash. And uh, so I ended up going to a community college, Rio Hondo College here in Whittier, California. And uh, they ha the music department, it was a mighty music department, but it was very small. You know, they didn't, they didn't have a jazz band. They didn't have a band band. Um, they had a diverse ensemble, but I didn't, know, I didn't know. I didn't even know what that meant. All I saw was there was a voice class. Okay. And I said, all right, I need to get this over with. <laughs> Literally said, I'm going to get this over with. <laughs> So I entered this 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 voice class, and the teacher, the teacher there, wow, was like no, nothing I've ever experienced in my life. I mean, the energy, the vibrancy, the life for her. She, she, you know, she, it was more than singing. You know, it was about not just the beauty of art, but the beauty of life and our place in the world. It was just like an amazing, amazing class, and obviously she was really, really good at singing. And a teaching voice and uh but when i also also when i got to rio hondo college i went straight to a counselor because i thought this was a sign i thought my my dream was going to come true my dream was always to go to usc mm -hmm. join the trojan marching band and be be a business major that's what i always wanted to do wow. like, this is my chance to you know to, to you know i left cal poly but i'm going to transfer back into my dream school study business and go play in the on the on that football field the marching band um so i talked to the counselors because it's a small school go, what do we got to do you have to get straight a's all these things i was like okay so um so i was very proactive in that to ensure that i get to the school i want to go to so this voice class semester one is over and uh her, her name is miss gresham and gresham she goes so uh are you coming back next semester and I go, well, I don't know. I was thinking about it. She goes, well, that's not your real voice. You're a mimicker. That's what she was telling me, which was made sense because in high school, I guess I did, I did sing a little bit. I sang Frank Sinatra on the phone to the girls and their moms. Okay. And I would always just a little Sinatra, fly me to the moon, stuff like that. So I looked at her. I was like, yeah, I'll come next semester. You know, she intrigued me with that. Let's find your real voice. So I, I took the next semester and then the next semester and then the next semester. It's a, you know, community college is a two-year program. On that fourth semester, and also I'm, 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 you know, I'm kicking ass in my business classes, you know, so I'm on track. Mm -hmm. But I liked the class. It was like became like my hobby class. Um, and I get a call when I'm in accounting, accounting class from her. And she goes, you know, hey, hi, Joe, this is Ms. Gresham. She goes, at the other community college, they were doing a PDQ Bach festival. You know what a PDQ Bach is? No so, you know, Bach had like 21 kids or something, or 20 kids. PDQ Bach is the extra child, but he's not a real child. He, he was a modern composer, and PDQ means pretty damn quick. Okay. <laughs> it was PDQ Bach. And it's basically this composer under that name that composes uh, like parodies of so much classical music. Okay. Like Vivaldi's okay. The Four Seasons, mm -hmm. he composed The Seasonings, okay. which is an oratorio. So, um, like, I have a big chef aria. Open sesame seeds and see what you see. And then later, <laughs> sesame mucho. It's just really funny. Okay, like, cool. I really should record it and put it on YouTube because it's so funny. And um, Or, like, the girls would be like, if you got the money, honey, I got the time. You know, they're talking about... You know, the double on time, right? <laughs> yeah. It's really cool. And then uh, and then there's a half-act opera, The Stone Guest, which is a combination of Don Giovanni and, and Carmen. And it, it's just and it's just so funny. So she calls me and she goes, you know, our bass soloist here uh, just disappeared. He had to go. He had a family emergency. And the show's in two weeks. You're a quick study. Let me know if you want to do it. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Like, you know, I was very, yes, I'll do it kind mm -hmm. of guy. 
So I ended up going. Two weeks, I learned the music, and uh, and I guess because the, the festival is gonna ca they can't do the oratorio, they don't have a bass solo. I mean, that kind of it kind of saved the festival. So, but for, again, for me, I was just like, oh, cool. I didn't even realize that I I say I realized that that was my first time singing with orchestra, and it didn't hit me till years later. I was like, wait, that was actually with an orchestra and stuff. That was oh, kind of man. <clears throat> so um so let so so that was in April, and then you know final exams are coming it's the end of that time at school and um i um uh, i then get my assignment for my voice final my voice final miss miss gresham gives me in der fremde by robert schumann a german uh, art song a leader and in my head not out loud i was like really german like i, I thought finally i was gonna get some like italian like figaro yeah. i mean so, i was so ignorant back then i didn't even know there's no way i can sing that back then like figaro or something italian because i spoke spanish and all these things but i said okay i was like great she goes i want you to translate this word for word use a dictionary don't use google especially back then google translate was horrible yeah. so go get a used dictionary or go find a german dictionary and translate this word for word. Okay. So I go that week. I go to a used bookstore here in Uptown Whittier. Get the start going word for word. Come back next week. Did you do your assignment? Yes. So I read her the translation. She goes, "What do you think?" I go, "Miss Gresham, this is depressing. It says my mom's dead, my dad's dead. I was born alone. I'm a die alone, and no one's gonna know me. Oh, and there's a blood red sky." She's like. Your translation is, is perfect. She goes, but you're wrong. And I was like, what? I mean, I was totally blown away. What do you mean wow. I'm wrong? But she didn't give me the answer. She, she, she led me again. She said, this week, I want you to do some research on Germans and their relationship to nature. Okay. You, can, you can use Google this time. <laughs> I was like, okay. So I do the research. You know, talking about all the, uh, and you know, the relationship to nature. Oh, and apply it to the text. I come back next week. You do your assignment? Yes. What do you think? Miss Gresham, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever read in my life. I was just so inspired. I was like, wow. you transcend humanity, but it's so human at the same time. Oh my god. And, you know, just and uh she goes, Good. She goes, Now you can practice a piece. Because now you understand you it. You understand it, right? It's Absolutely. not just about knowing the word it's not about saying singing the words in the music. It's about knowing you know, with the, the composer's intention, its relationship to that culture, the the, bre the, the, the poet's intention. Mm -hmm. You know, she would always say, you have to know what Schikanator ate for lunch and wow. Mozart ate for lunch <laughs> during the, the magic flute <laughs> kind of deal. So so that was going to be my final exam. So the way her class is set up is, you know, we have a lecture the first hour and then we do a master class series, you know, and this is for non-majors. It's just a voice class. Yeah. And, uh, so I end up singing the Inde Fremda, and I, at the end, you know, it repeats that ple that that phrase, and no one knows me anymore. You know, und keiner kennt mich mehr hier. I remember closing my eyes. Und keiner kennt mich mehr hier. And then, as the postlude is going in the piano, I feel this energy. This, and my eyes are closed, stringent like a stringendo, like this tight, tight energy. And I open my eyes, and the whole class is in tears. Wow. And I was just like, oh, man. And it, it, it felt like a, a, it felt like silence forever. Obviously, it was forever. And then they applaud, and, you know, I bow. I acknowledge the pianist. And then Ms. Reshman says, can I see you after class? And I'm like, oh, shit, I messed up the German. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, yeah, sure. So everyone's finishing their finals, and then, as we're leaving, she always greeted everybody at the door, in and out, by hand, handshake, all the time. Okay. <laughs> Pre-COVID, big time pre-COVID. Yeah. And uh, so I called her, and she goes, please meet me in the next room. And I'm like, uh-oh, I really fucked up the German. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> there we go. And uh, so I'm waiting in the room. <laughs> And I mean, Miss Gresham's about like five feet tall, maybe four eleven. Yeah. She just like, barges in, like walks straight up to me and says, "You felt that, didn't you?" And I was like, "Yes." She goes, "Now I know you're moving on." Oh, oh, I forgot to say. So that was my last class, that final at the okay. school. So 
I wasn't kidding. I was really involved. Like all my business teachers knew. I was like, I don't, you don't, don't give me an A. I'll earn it, but I need to let you know what my goals are. You know, yeah. so they're very supportive. So I was getting all my emails. Like as soon as I had those final exams, you know, oh, you got an A. You got an A. You got an A. <laughs> I love my business calculus teacher. You got an A double minus. I'm just kidding. You have an A. You know, like saying like you're good. So I, I, I got into USC. Wow. My dream, yeah, USC business major. I was gonna, you know, the Trojan marching band. So when I actually walked into my final and in my music final, I told her, I was like, Scratch, you know, I got in, I'm transferring, I'm so excited, you know. So when she met me at the end, she goes, she goes, you felt that in there, in there, right? I was like, yes. Yeah. She goes, now I know you're moving on and transferring, and I'm so proud of you. You've been working so hard these past two years and, and all those classes. She goes, but I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you this. Do you want to be an opera singer? Because I can get you there, but it's going to take a lot of work. And then I just kind of froze. I was like, yes. Just like that. It was not a conscious decision. Yes. Something came into my body and said yes and left my body. Because I was just I was just shocked. I was just like, yes. And she's like, good. She goes, we'll have you audition at Cerritos College. You just saved their PDQ Bach Festival. So you should be an easy shoe in. You know, we'll prepare you for your audition. Because she taught at both colleges. And that's, that's the school where they give you your private lessons for free. State paid. Wow. You know, it comes with your tuition. And I, and I just kind of not shake. I was like, oh. she shakes my hand and I'm just like mute. I'm dumbfounded. I'm like, so she talks, she tells me all this. She shakes my hand and she sends me off. And I just, I'm just walking out like a zombie, right? Get in the truck, drive home. Just, just quiet, just shocked, you know? And yeah. prime, obviously my mind's racing. Like, dude, you, like you literally just had your dream come true. And then all of a sudden you just said yes to become a singer. What's going on? Like, because I never thought, oh, I want to be a singer. It wasn't like I was taking the class and I was getting swayed into it. I just enjoyed the class. Yeah. So, so there I am. I drive all the way home. <laughs> I get home. I get into my room. I sit down. And then the next words out of my mouth after saying yes was, what the fuck did I just do? <laughs> I, just, I just shout, what the fuck did I just do? And at, at that moment, <laughs> I had this epiphany, this like vision. <laughs> And it was it was a blender, and in this blender went everything I everything I I was I did everything I was you know the music I used to tutor the speeches and my dad's real estate conventions just like everything that was me went into this blender yeah. and and then poured out this green juice and it said opera singer wow. and it was like in two seconds so in like real time it was literally what the fuck did I just do. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I'm going to do this the rest of my life. Like How magic. Amazing. Just set in. So that's why I say it chose me because, I mean, technically it wasn't even opera. It was just classical singing. I did an art song and, yeah, we did a little bit of these songs, but it was just, it was always a mixture of styles, right? But she teaches in that bel canto tradition, the on the breath kind of thing. So it was, and that was the beginning of this journey. I mean, that, from then I, I did. I went to Cerritos. I studied with her for three years, you know, until I felt comfortable to move on. And then I went to Cal State Fullerton, got my bachelor's, and then I went to Manhattan School of Music, got my master's, and then we're in a, we had a pandemic, and now I'm starting my doctorate in the fall in Michigan uh, State. We got a full I'm ride, and, cool, man. and uh, it's been and what did what did your family think about this? So it was interesting. My 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 parents were always supportive of it. Mm -hmm. Um, f funny thing, everything's always hindsight. Twenty twenty. My dad would always say, he never said that you should be a singer, ish. But he always said you have a nice voice. You should look look into singing. But it was always just in passe because I just because he's a musician too, and he plays trumpet and piano, and I would play saxophone. And you know, and the reason I played saxophone was because my grandpa played saxophone. Right. Okay. And so my grandfather was actually, and my I'm like, my grandpa. I don't even call him grandpa. I call him Papi Chui. Yeah. You know, yeah. that was a baby. My Papi Chui is you know. I was uh, I was the the favorite, and he was my favorite, and so me and him were really close. Um, so I, that's why I chose the saxophone. I was eight years old, and my dad's like, "What do you want to play?" I was like, "I want to play saxophone like my grandpa." And wow. because it's, I I remember saying it's romantic. My dad says because I said it was sexy. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, and actually the funny thing is the first song I ever learned on on saxophone was tequila. Okay. Because I pushed all the buttons down. 
and that was D. Dun. And I let go of a hand, and that was G. Dun, dun. That fourth, right? And I was like, huh. Dun, dun. And here, I'm just playing with the sounds. Dun, dun, dun. And I just, and I just went with, like, I put one finger down. I didn't even know the music yet. I just put one finger down. Dun. And I let go of another finger. Dun. Then I, was, then I, I just by the recognition of sounds, the next thing I'm like, Dad, look. Dun, 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 dun. So that was actually my first song before I even wow. could read anything. Just by playing with his fingers and stuff. Um, so so my grandpa, though, was the one that was <laughs> the patriarch of this music family. Yeah. He was the one that was against it. Totally against Dang. it. Because his interpretation, he was a musician in Mexico. So he had a different life in Mexico as a musician. Okay. You know, all the okay. traveling and, you know, just, you know, for him, he has a different idea, right? The bars, the traveling, the, you know, it was a harder life. Yeah. Right, to, do all that the late nights and stuff um but then he ended up coming to watch me perform in the merry widow okay. from when i was in at cal state fullerton in my undergrad and i remember it was the seventh show maybe or the sixth show he was there and i was playing the baron mirko teta and in the merry widow it's you know you make up the country you're from petrovania or Bologna, whatever they say yeah. ours was petrovania right so so I remember they would say like, "Oh, do some gibberish when you yell at at, at your wife because she has you know, she's cheating on you." So before I was like, "Oh, I'm not seeing Roshkin. I'm also gonna make some whatever, right?" But that night, my my grandpa was his name was El Botas. They call him El Botas in in Cuauhtémoc, okay. in Chihuahua. That's his nickname in the city, El Botas, which is boots. Boots, yeah. So and he's from Chihuahua. So I remember I go, "Oh, Valencien," and then my grandpa's name is Jesus Francisco Maldonado, right? So I go, Jesus Francisco, what the Chihuahua? You know, just start. I, I I use those. You know, so a lot of the Latinos in the crowd were like, "Did you say Chihuahua in there?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> but after that show, my grandpa was behind me hundred percent. Wow, okay, cool. That changed him like that. He's like, "This is totally different than what I thought," and he goes, "This is where you belong," and all this stuff. So, uh, so yeah, so they were very very supportive, and I was I've always been very lucky that my parents are just supportive of anything we want to do as long as we do it if we love it and we do it with beauty and passion, and, and, yeah, and passion, so happy, you know, and uh, yeah, so that's that. So I didn't, I, yeah, opera was. I used to say I I like all music except country and opera. Yeah, really. Now I love, ever since then, it's I love music, especially country and opera. How cool, man. Yeah, so it's... Yeah, it has a funny way of grabbing you, right? Yeah. So, so obviously, like, you've you've got, you know, some amazing things coming up, but what are your plans for the future? I mean, like, where where, where do you want this to take you? You, you already, um, you've got your dream, you know, you, you went to the, the, you know, the... The, the, you had the schooling that you wanted. You played in a band that you wanted. So, like, what, what's what's the future plan? Well, here's the deal. I didn't go to USC. Oh, you didn't? So I got my. No, oh, oh, I, I forgot. It. Yeah, I got so <laughs> caught up. So what happened? What what I said? Yes, and I changed everything. I called them and I said, "I'm sorry, I won't be able to attend your school. Um, I'm going to be an opera singer." And they kind of chuckled on the phone, like, like "Really? Okay." okay. And I was like, "Yeah." They go, "Well, good luck with that." And I was like. <laughs> Thank you. Like, I didn't go to USC. So that's when I ended up going to the other community college to take my voice lessons with that teacher for my voice class. Okay. So she ended up, she, she, and she's my, you know, she's still my teacher. She's my mentor. Obviously, when I go to schools, I have to have the teachers at that school. But she, you know, she's like my little guardian angel. She's not, she says, I'm not your music mommy, but she's, you know, maybe she's better than a music mommy. <laughs> she's, just, she's just been an inspiration and, and she, you know she centers me, and she, she obviously she knows me and my voice very well. It's been twelve years, and you know I'm just so blessed that she's she's that she came into my life. So it's you know my biology teacher and then Ms. Gresham. I mean they're, they're the ones that kind of steered me into this That's direction amazing, man. because they saw it and they you know and, and now I just I can't see my life doing anything else. No, I can imagine. You know I just I mean. And, and I've had such, she's been such a great teacher and I've had such great teachers that for my future, I mean, the DMA, the choice of this DMA isn't, wasn't like, oh, I need to get a DMA. It was more, it was really specific to the school because the teacher there, his name is Mark Rucker and his lovely wife, Sadie. They're so sweet. I met them in 2018, right after I graduated from Manhattan School of Music. So I did go to my dream school, my singing dream school, which was okay. Manhattan School of Music. 
Actually, I didn't even, and I didn't get into USC. That was weird. But anyway, but I also fulfilled my USC dream because I got to do two operas with Brent McMahon, who's the director of the USC opera, through another organization, but with all the USC cats. So I, in a way, I kind of feel like I fulfilled my USC dream. I'm, I'm a bit more, almost. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we just did one a couple of weeks ago. We did La Fille du Regiment, and then right before COVID, right, 2019, in December, we did La Cenerentola. Okay. So, um, so, yeah, 2019, and that's when I went to Opera Maya. That was a good year, because that year I traveled. I went to, to Mexico, obviously, and I haven't been I go, since I started singing. I couldn't go to Mexico. I was always busy. Wow. So that was really special for me to go to with Opera Maya. And, you know, I just really cherish that time and to go back to Because I did go to Xcaret as a kid. Yeah. And then to see it as an oh, adult. Completely different, I can imagine now, right? Oh, my God. It's like, oh, I want to sing there. <laughs> you know, just do a little cameo. <laughs> um so uh yeah so so i didn't go to usc but uh it's been uh it's been bi-coastal since then and it's just been a big blessing and 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 it's not easy obviously it's, it's a tough business you yeah know? we're in the business of rejection to be and you know all these no's and but the yeses do come you know and so it's i've also tried to kind of always tell my colleagues like don't let the no's like there's, it's just directing you to where you need to be. You know, it, it doesn't. It's not a reflection of the. Oh, you're not. You don't. You don't belong in this business because you got to know. No, it's just literally someone could eat a sandwich and then like the pickles and then Absolutely. they don't like you. You know, like, Absolutely. yeah. Or yeah. they just see a different vision of what their product's going to be. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, so the for the future, for so this Michigan thing, it, it was uh. Mark Rucker. Oh, so in 2018, after I graduated, I did fall staff. Okay. With the Martino Royal Foundation. You know, the famous singer Martino Royal, she has this beautiful foundation, Prelude to Performance, that gives you the opportunities to young singers. And I sang the title role of Falstaff. I had no cover. And I was heartbroken. And I nailed it. So wow. for me, that's like, that was my war, you know. And, and I didn't even, I actually didn't even know much or like Falstaff. But when I got out of that, I mean, it's my favorite role. It's my dream role. Like, it's, I mean, it's not my dream role. I already did it, but it's still my dream role, you know? You know so, so Mark and Sadie Rucker, they were the, um, they, they helped, they directed the whole organization for that summer program for Martino Arroyo. And um, so that's where I met them. So I did the fall staff and my the, the whole f experience was just incredible because Unfortunately, we our conductor Willie Waters, he had a heart condition. He had to go to the hospital, so he couldn't do it. So our opera coach Richard Cordova, he stepped up. And but Richard Cordova was the rehearsal pianist for the Giulini album of Falstaff when he was young. Oh, okay. So he had the notes of Giulini. Like Maestro Giulini, like who I I think I think he worked with Verdi or he, like one one step or Verdi was still alive or something. Oh. And um, so we would nerd out. I mean, I told, I'm, I'm not, I'm kidding you not. I had no cover. There was like nine covers for Nanetta. And there was covers for everybody except Falstaff. It's a tough role to sing. But you know what? It fit me like a glove. And it really? was so fun. Act one is like this kind of just, it's very baritone-y like, and then, like a like a baritone baritone act two is more a little ly lyric baritone very like you know you're trying to seduce Alice and Meg and and then act three is very like dramatic baritone so it's it's like three baritones in one opera and um, it was just so much fun it was so much fun and I really I got out luckily when I was my last year at at, um, at Manhattan School of Music that fall or that winter we did the opera scenes and we did the fugue. You know, the Tutto nel mondo è burla. Tutto nel mondo è burla. L'uomo. And everybody just comes in and just, that's the ending of the opera. Mm -hmm. So I learned the hardest part of the opera, which is the fugue. So going into that, I was like, that was good. But also learning the coaches there, we, I kind of, that's where I started understanding the psychology of Falstaff. You know, and Falstaff's based off, you know, Henry the, the Henry plays by Shakespeare and Mary Wives of Windsor by Shakespeare. And, you know, Falstaff was with the Duke of Norfolk and, you know, he, he had his buddy and then all of a sudden the, he has to, the, his buddy has to step up and be, uh, I don't know, like I think it was a king or a prince. And 
So he felt abandoned. So all this psychology of Falstaff really played into the opera. Where, and I mean, the point I make to this, because when I got the reviews, I mean, obviously, I always want to see great singer, oh, you know, like, or opera news, seemingly unlimited baritone. I mean, I love I love that. That's, but for me, that's the standard. Like, I have to be excellent. You can possibly be, of course. I have to, me being excellent is how I honor my teachers, mm -hmm. how I honor the art, you know, is mm -hmm. excellent. <laughs> or as my buddy Arkin would say, excellence is the minimum standard. Man, a few words, but those are his words. Wow. And, um, but for this one, I really, I really delved into, into the psyche of Falstaff and, and, and to the intent of everything he said. So for me, the reviews, when they said, you know, I've seen Falstaff six times, including twice at the Met. And I finally understand it today though. Wow. Like for me, that's, that's the goal, yeah. you know, yeah. or, uh, you know, the, um, when I actually did the, the scenes, uh, Catherine Malfitano's husband, um, he was so sweet. Stephen, he, he reached out to me and said, you know, your, your, your performance moved me so much. You know, I've been having a hard time these months and it really uplifted me. So thank you. And then he invited me to, to go watch, um, Il Trovatore's dress rehearsal at the Met. And that's where I got to meet Quinn Kelsey and, you know, who gave me a whole bunch of advice. The most important one being pacienza patience <laughs> you know because relax you know you're still young you know i was 28 30 even now it's 32 i'm still young he's like you're still a baby you know just be patient you know and and, and oh. be calm with all you because know, i want to sing all this repertoire and so I've, I've had good guidance from all that and so fall stuff was just an incredible experience for me so now when i audition to michigan you know mark rucker is you know, i wanted to study with mark rucker he's a verity baritone had a huge career beautiful career sounds wonderful and you know so i want i figured 32 to 35 36 is a perfect time for me to really grasp verdi and understand that not just the history and how he composes but also as a singer as a performer you know uh, uh, and as a musician the style and how to really do it really well because when i graduate from the dma at 36 that that 36 that age is that's Verdi. That's Verdi time because the voice is matured and, yeah. you know, that's, that's where you can start handling those bigger orchestras healthily. So um, so that was a big part of the decision to apply only to Michigan was, was to work with Mark Rucker. And then uh, what my Ford from Falstaff is, is there as a DMA student. He just he loves it there. He was explaining so much how they're very supportive of the, of the performing aspect. So, like, he was he was able to do... Um, Mazetto with two opera companies, regional opera companies. Sometimes in schools, they don't let you perform outside the school. Right? Yeah, so, uh, keep the talent in house. Yeah. yeah, and they push, they push, they don't push, but they let you go with the way they say, yeah, go do your thing, go do your thing. Um, so that, that for me was a big factor because the performer never dies. <laughs> that's, you know, the stage is, that's where I can send the message, you know. <laughs> That's where, um, as my teacher was, my first teacher was saying, Ms. Gresham, she goes, it's not about us. It comes through us, mm -hmm. you know? So our responsibility is to give it that excellence, is to, is to understand it and, and send that message with the beauty of us, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and like I was saying earlier, th th like this is, it's tough. It's a tough career. But fortunately, for me, fortunately, I've learned, I've not only had great teachers and great guidance and great mentorship, but I've had moments, <laughs> I'd say, God, it brings me these moments. I've had my moments that remind me why I do this. Wow. And, and in the beginning, Ms. Gresham would say, always have a reason why you sing. And I remember the first time I heard that, I felt so much pressure. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm only like 21. <laughs> I have a purpose for my life. But then she said, and it can change. When she gave me that permission or allowed me to have that permission to change, like have a purpose, it can change, but always have a purpose. Mm -hmm. Ever since then, it's always, I mean, that pressure was went away. Yeah. And it's just like, why am I doing this? Why am I here today? Why am I doing this today? And uh, I remember one of my first most impress, um, impressionable moments, life-changing moments, actually, as a singer, was when I worked at the Macaroni Grill, Italian restaurant, right? Welcome to the Macaroni Grill, benvenuto. And you know you sing and you get tips and all these things and but the best payday was had nothing to do with Benjamins or Green. There was this family that walked in. 
it was uh two parents and a little girl and you know we we, we greet people benvenuto the macaroni girl you celebrating anything today and they're like this is our daughter bella she's eight years old and she just beat stage four cancer we just got wow. the news today so we're here to celebrate and i was like wow like so, so I just learned this, the aria, Bella si come un angelo from Don Pasquale, right? Beautiful like an angel. I was like, her name's Bella. So, so I sang, Bella si come un angelo. So I remember singing to them and they were just like, wow. And then for the next 30 minutes, me and Bella were singing everything from Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, to ABC. <laughs> and we were just, it was just our moment right there. And in that moment, I remember what, looking at the parents and they're just crying, just happy watching her sing. And... And I'm just realizing, like, that gift was the gift of life, of appreciating life. And, and you know, she, she's alive, you know, and we're alive. And, every, and my, my best friend Omar, he would always say, you know, today I woke up, got my legs, I'm breathing, life is good. But, man, that moment, that really hit me, like, appreciating life and, and using that purpose again. Like, every day I breathe, I have, there's a purpose, you know. So that for me, so I, I, as much as it gave them joy, you know, to, 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 for us to sing together, it gave me a big joy, big lesson and a big, uh, a big grounding and gratitude yeah. and, uh, eight year old Bella. And then when I went to New York, I remember I was working at a church in Jersey, in Maplewood, New Jersey, uh, called St. Joe's, St. Joseph's actually. And we did a veterans day concert and, uh, the, the the guy Gregory Chimay, the director, I met him when I went to Italy. He, he has a performing arts thing in a CZ. So he goes, Jose, he talks like this. He goes, I want you to sing uh, something opera in this concert. And then I'm like, well, I was like, I don't really have anything in English. I was like, I do have a French aria about a soldier praying to God to take care of his sister while he goes off to war. You know, because his parents have passed away. He, yeah, sing that. I'm like, okay. So I remember. I translate, I kind of give a spiel about it because it's in French, right? In this Veterans Day concert. And I say, you know, and her name is Margarita. So when I say, oh, Margarita, that's, you know, I'm praying to God to take care of my sister as I go off to war. And if for some reason I don't make it back, that I will faithfully watch over her from heaven. So then I sing my aria. And uh, at the end of the concert, you know, everybody comes and they, oh, you were so great. Take pictures, all these things are great. But I noticed from the corner of my eye, there was this old guy coming real, again, old guy, oh, he's an old guy, coming really slowly. Um, and he finally, re I mean, everyone's already cleared. He finally gets to me, sh gives his hand, it's all shaking. He looks at me, shakes my hand, looks me in the eye and says, and, and I see his hat. And his hat says, like, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War. Like, this man's been through three wars, at least. And he shakes my hand and he says... All he says is, I'm 92 years old. Never in my life has another man made me cry wow. until tonight. Thank you. Wow. And I was just, I, I, I wanted to cry. I was like, thank you for your service. Thank you so much. And, you know, to think of everything he's been through, held in maybe, or suppressed. Yeah. And the music, that music, or, you know, that, that, that soldier, not me singing but the soldier praying to god in that aria it just it, it, in some way it healed him you know he probably probably died a little more peacefully yeah. later music is like not just opera but i mean music that's why there's therapies about it because it's it's just the phenomenal it's just healing it's a time machine it can transport you back to it's just the most incredible gift that i think that we have really after love we change the molecules, man. We change the molecules in the room and completely so so i always like i think it's still my website it's like i don't i i say you know i don't present my voice i resonate my soul you know so so every time i sing it's 100 percent or nothing yeah actually it's 100 percent or 100 percent. period yeah. yeah you know no matter what because you know it, it, so so it could be at a restaurant it could be at a church at a veterans day concert or even the next year when i when i was doing fall staff actually i had a lunch break so I went down to the deli, the like the Hunter Deli. Oh, so good for my lunch break. And then as I was walking back to rehearsal, I had a shirt that said "The Pride of Mexico." Yeah. It was from a it was it was actually a wrestling shirt, Alberto del Rio. But it says "The Pride of Mexico," 
So this lady comes up to me. She's like, can I take a picture of your shirt? I was like, sure. Because she had like a Latinos in NYC page, right? On Facebook. She goes, oh. She goes, what's that? My name tag. Oh, it's false stuff. You should come to the opera, blah, 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 blah. I say, oh, can you sing something? So I was, sure, sure, sure. I had I had time. I look at my colleague and I was like, okay, I have a minute. So I sing O Sole Mio, like in the street, right? Right there on the sidewalk. O Sole Mio, a little crowd shows up. And then... Uh, as I'm about to leave, this old man, another old man, this old man, bald, right? <laughs> he just kind of walks into with his swag and he goes, Andale, canta algo romántico. <laughs> like, sing a romantic song. <clears throat> so obviously, can't say no to that energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no way I'm going to say no. So I was like, all right. So I sing Besame Mucho, right? So I do the Besame Mucho. And I do like a, a Bocelli operatic Besame Mucho with the high A at the end. It's so funny. Okay. So I sing this Besame Mucho. By then, even the Ubers were stopping getting out. And then someone's trying to get in the Uber. And they're like, oh, wait. They, you know, everyone's watching. It's a big crowd. Mm-hmm. So I finish. Because I say big crowd because I got to go to rehearsal. So I make a beeline. I'm boom. I'm like, thank you so much. I have to go to rehearsal. And I book it because, you know, like, if not, they're going to come talk to me. And, you know, so, you know, I have to, like, <laughs> I have to go to rehearsal. So I clear the audience. And right as they clear the audience, this big black porton, this big black gate opens, right? I just hear, and I hear, disculpa, senor, in Spanish. I'm like, Excuse me, sir. And I'm like, oh, shit. I was like, yeah, <laughs> see, you know. He goes, he tells me in Spanish, you know, I, I was sweeping. I was sweeping uh, the stairs, and I heard you singing Besame Mucho. He goes, and um, that was my mom's favorite song. And she died two years ago on this day. Wow. And when you when you were singing it, I just felt her holding me. Wow. She crying. Was, Thank you. Oh, I start crying, give him a hug, all these things. I was late to rehearsal. Yeah. But they forgave me because of the story, you know. But you know, so so the point is, even on the sidewalk, not even with people watching you, you could change somebody's life. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's. So for me, it's like just the opportunity, just knowing that when I open, when I sing, I have to do it with all heart. I have to do 100% because there's an opportunity they can heal somebody that day. It could, whether it's just changing their mood or having them remember yeah. someone or, yeah. or saving their life. Who knows? Maybe, you know. And, um, and I, you know, I have a buddy, a cynical buddy, like, yeah, but you don't know. I go, yeah, I don't need to know. I don't, I don't need to know. No. But just knowing that the opportunity is there. Is all I need. Absolutely. I, I was saying to when I was chatting to Mary, I just said, you know, like I found the whole transition of moving to Mexico very, dif- very difficult. And I was a pop star in the nineties, and then I became because I had a bar- baritone voice and because I was a little bit less poppy and more kind of Western musically. And I would wow. sing like this. That all of a sudden I was doing classical crossover. I discovered Josh Groban, Il Divo, Andrea Bocelli. So I was started, so I was. The bad boy of, of classical crossover I was pierced, tattooed, singing, you know, Ness and Dora and things like this. And I and I remember like when I left England and I came to Mexico, I lost everything that was mine. I lost my culture, my climate, my friends, my family, my my plans and my dreams, I guess, as well. And um until one day when I'm living in this new little town in Quintana Roo, and my friends say, Oh, there's this opera group. And I'm like, no way, like I've not listened to opera since London. Okay, okay, let's go. And all of a sudden, you know, Opera Maya are performing in this tiny little church. And that is the first time, as I said to Mary as well, that is the first time I felt I had some form of belonging, something that resonated with who I was that I couldn't find when I was here on my own. I lost every part of Jaden by starting this new life. And all of a sudden, in that moment, I remembered who I was. And it was amazing. That was a beautiful gift that you guys gave me that day. You know, so yeah, and it can work. You know, you just, you know, I, I, I sing mostly pop ballads now because I could be singing and someone taps me on the shoulder and goes, do you know any Whitney Houston? I'm like, oh. <laughs> right, so I'll, be, oh, I'll dance with somebody. <laughs> Straight off the and door, we like, do you know what? I'm just singing ballads now. I'm singing something that everyone loves. But, in, but on, you know, like, on the coattails of that as well, where, you know, it moves people. It, it reminds people of a time, maybe a time more beautiful, a time more happy, a time 
you know, when they were with their mother or their grandmother. And it's, it's a phenomenal gift, you know, and like, you gave me the gift of just remembering who I was for that one night. I felt like I was me again, which I hadn't felt for four years, you know, so it's, it's amazing. Wow. So I'm, you know, I'm so chuffed with what you're doing and, and the blessing that you're able, you know, you're able to bring to people. It's phenomenal. And you're an incredible artist. In If, if you, you carry on. I was just saying, home is art is always home that's Absolutely. what i've learned traveling everywhere art you'll never it'll never Absolutely. hurt you it'll Absolutely. remind you of who you are the art and that's why art has to live on and endure Absolutely. through everything so you are a man of of great expectations of yourself so if if, if you had to give joe a plan where he's going to be in 10 years time what are you doing 10 years the Met. Cool. <laughs> Ten years. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping the, the this Falstaff. Fa Falstaff feels like. I mean, all, all, I'll sing all music. I love bel canto, but something about the, when I did that Falstaff in 2018, the head of the the Met's um, wardrobe, the one that does head of the wardrobe at the Met, she went to watch Falstaff. And it, ever, ever since she told me, she's like, she goes, you did such a great job yesterday. She goes, you know, I'm doing Ambrojo Maestri's costume right now for his false staff. I know I'm going to do your costume one day. Wow. Ever since she said that, I was like, I'm going to go. Okay. Like, it just, it just felt it. Um, in 10 years, I def, I mean, I'd hope a big part of, of, um, of this, the journey, because for me, it's all about the journey. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, Absolutely. even the Met, like, that's part of the journey because the what drives the journey is the purpose right so i'd hope i'd hope in 10 years that i have um the ability to to kind of make bigger impact with the art in the community so my train my best training i would say my stage training was in community college with that same voice teacher we had a, like i said we had a small program but mighty but she she told she she fought to the not fought with but fought for yeah, an opportunity, and the dean was wonderful, John and Downey too. She goes, just give me a van in a Friday morning, and in three years we sang to twenty thousand kids. Wow. We prepared wow. school shows, we you know that addressed bullying, that addressed immigration, that wow. addressed abuse, wow. and in those school shows that she she directed and curated. I mean, I remember kids. I you know she'd always have a Q and A for with us for the kids. And I remember I say, oh, my name is Jose Maldonado. I started using my name Jose because mm -hmm. it's my name. It is, you yeah. know. And and I remember the first one, the first time I said it. Oh, my name is Jose. And then this, I hear a kid. Oh my God, he has my name. Oh, like they, they, they don't like like the, for them the possibility of being there is open now because we have the same name, mm -hmm. Jose. Because they're not used to that. They don't know that, you know. And and my t even my teacher, she she. Um, I, like I said, she's just a blessing because she chose to teach at that community college. I mean, I think when she was 17, she was recording with Columbia artists and they would use the space there to record. And, and she, she, I remember her saying like, you know, there's, um, no one's really going to look at the East LA school colleges for talent. You know, it's always like Westwood, UCLA, USC, like, you know, Santa Monica, um, she goes, but there's talent here. No one's ever going to know it. So I, that's why she chose to teach there. And I'm a product of that. Wow. If she wasn't there, who knows? Maybe I would have taken wow. that pro voice class or that voice class at uh, Cal Poly, and that's it. It would have been one and done. But because she was there with that intent, that purpose, it all lines up. you know. And so a big part of my future, it's not that I want to teach because I like teaching. I love teaching because I always learn. But I also feel the responsibility to do it and the pleasure of the responsibility to pass that on yeah, because that's how it stays alive. And you know, it, it's the big blessing that I have that I can't, I don't want to hoard to myself. Yeah. Right. I want to pass yeah. it on. So hopefully um, in 10 years, I also hope I already do my first fiddler on the roof. <laughs> I really want to do a fiddler. Oh, it's so fun. And a Sweeney. Wow, man. Aside from the opera stuff, but uh, yeah, 10 years just uh, traveling and like, not just performing, but if if any time I have an opportunity to 
to to give back not just on the stage that's that's the purpose you know that's why i do what i do that's why i can't see myself doing anything else you're you're an amazing man and like i love it I, i'm i've always been i've always said that um the journey is the destination we so rapidly want the mansion or the swimming pool and that's what we're aiming for that we don't enjoy any of the journey until we get there but now when when i've said that you know the destination is a journey or the journey is a destination it's about being present in that moment and what you're achieving and it's funny i was talking to mary because you know obviously she's done a lot of schools work and you know when i started seeing classical music it was purely fluke it was i was at my lowest point of my life i saw these four handsome guys on a national variety show singing a tony braxton song which i was a big tony braxton fan they were singing in Spanish, which for me is the sexiest sung language on the planet. They were singing Unbreak My Heart <laughs> in, in, um, you know, in, and I was like, it was Il Devo, but they were new. And I was like, oh my God. I literally, I sold whatever I could sell to get a quick half hour opera lesson. I was on BBC TV the following week because I was an ex-pop star now singing, you know, like Josh Groban and stuff like that. And um, I started a tour as well. It's called Breaking the Mold where it was about encouraging people to play to their strengths and their passions, not to what they feel society. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, like you might be a big tough guy at school and everyone thinks you should be, you know, the best footballer player, but actually you want to do cross stitch and knitting and you're really good at it because you do it at home and actually you should be able to. And I would go and say, you know, I want to be a singer when I grow up, even though I was still growing up. And I say, you know, so what do you think I should sing? And they're like, Oh, we think you should do rap. So, or we think you're a rock singer or whatever. And I said, like, okay, I'm going to sing to you. So at the end of this, I, w I used to teach salsa. So I would get like the boys to dance with the boys and the girls to dance with the girls. And then we'll swap. And it was all about just breaking down, you know, kind of the conformities of what we think we should do. And at the end, I, I would do a show in the, you know, in the main hall. And I would sing literally classical crossover music. 90% was in Italian. You know, not only was it really amazing fun and the kids loved it but on the flip side i've actually never sold so many albums in my life but all of a sudden like these these eight to twelve year old kids wanted a Jaden cornelius classical album for christmas and birthday like it was mad so they were listening to nella fantasia and Nessa Dorma, you know like all these you know time to say goodbye and all these different songs which they would never have even thought about listening to before and don't get me wrong i'm i'm, I'm, a, I'm a pop star that can sing a good classical track you know i'm not a trained phenomenal baritone that can do you know like the, i don't have that art and that craft that someone like you has but it was still opening that journey for them to just consider different forms of music and and they loved it you know and it was amazing and that like you're saying that for me was just i've just sown little seeds of potentials you know like that little kid who everyone is saying should be the footballer but actually maybe now he wants to become a singer or maybe yeah. he wants to do his cross stitch and have school fates and sell his product. I mean, it's just a, it was just about you know playing to strengths and passions. So it's really Absolutely. interesting that you know we were kind of you were doing the same kind of thing. So I commend you, sir, for your Thank work. You. you know, even 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 if like like okay, I'm I'm trained baritone or you know to sing, but at the end of the day, it it's. Like my training is only so I, I can sing a, a three hour opera and not get hurt yeah. at the end of the day. You well, know, because what really what really matters is that resonance of the soul, right? Whether you're doing a crossover or you're doing an opera, you don't you know, not even I mean look at Louis Armstrong. He did not have the most beautiful voice, but you love the voice. But, um, yeah. Well everything. It, the way the he whole did experience. Yeah. yeah, the way he played, the way he looked, his smile, yeah. and all this. It's just that because that was just him yeah that's just him giving himself yeah. lovingly to everything to the art to the people and for what he does you know um so i i, I think that's that's what keeps the world moving yeah. is that that's what propels the momentum is is that joy is that sacrifice i mean even it's like we had a bad day but you know what my head's at the door because my time now is with these people or is with this person or is in this moment and uh well that's love it all boils down to that doesn't it just love uh, what you can give what you can, do, what you can bring everything jose luis thank maldonado you. Yeah. thank you so much for your time on my show 
I I think you're. I'm even more of a fan now. I've got to speak to you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. You're such a sound guy, mate. You're really, really cool. And I hope you'll come back at some point in the future and chat to me a bit more. You know, when you've got more shows coming up, and and if you ever have a show that you want me to promote, we can do a little five minute Jaden show special on a Wednesday where we can promote and you know and All right, that sounds good. Over. I hope you get a chance to come back to the Riviera Maya in the future as well. So oh, thank you. Me too. Yeah, I'm sad not to see you this year. Did you meet Simon? I don't Simon, think I he's the tenor, the Korean tenor. Posh, was... Yes, I know. I didn't. I think I was introduced to him, but I didn't get to chat to him. Oh, Simon yeah. Lee. Yeah, he was in Chicago. He's just. He was my voice teacher at the Opera Maya. And okay. You know, like I always talked to him. I always said, "I want to go back." He goes, "You need to come back." I was like, "I want to go back." So uh, yeah, I'll be back. Well, oh, you oh. in contact <laughs> us. When you are, we need to catch up for a coffee before you go and sing. Absolutely. No, I'll Absolutely. I look forward May, to it. Thank you so very much. And we'll definitely catch up again soon. Awesome. Look forward to it. Have a wonderful Have a day, day, my friend. Take good care. Gracias. Adios. All righty. <laughs> How amazing is he? What a super, super incredible gentleman. And what a bloody amazing talent. And yes, you are going to be seeing a little bit more of him before we end the show. So I'd like to say to Jose Luis, thank you so much for being part of my show. It was a privilege and a pleasure to have you on the show. And thank you to you guys for watching. And for continuing to watch and support in the Jaden Show, please make sure you're subscribing. Please make sure if you get an opportunity to see Jose Luis, wherever he's performing, make sure you go and see him. It will be a complete blessing to your life to go and watch him perform. He's such an amazing artist. Um, don't forget, follow, subscribe, like, comment, share, 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 share. And I don't mean, do you believe in life after love? Share, I mean, share this channel with all your friends so they can subscribe and comment and like and do all the same things i will see you next sunday for another super duper episode of the Jaden show and i'm going to leave you with jose luis maldonado jr singing some more amazing opera see you next week guys take care stay beautiful <laughs> No.
Vivi, vivi, sol, vivi, vivi. 